our last few hours in the shoebox. He needed glasses? Yeah, so we got glasses. They're UV ray protection. I needed this shirt. It was a need. Not a want. Not a want. A need. It was a need. Boston scream. Okay. No. Do you want one, Marcy? No, thank you. I'm on a diet. Yeah, I'm not. I'm on a diet too. I'm on a donut diet. <laughs> yeah. No, no, donuts. Should I get a Vampire's Delight as well or a Ghoulish Glaze? Kind of a Ghoulish Glaze too. Sorry. Thank you. Just in the same bag. That's all. I'm doing like paleo except I eat pizza and I drink beer. You're on the paleo pizza diet. Yeah. You know, it works. Why don't you look at a three-year-old wandering off and calling your name? Marcella is going to be in Brooklyn for four days, and then she's going somewhere. I am going to an undisclosed location. I deactivated my Facebook account. I'm essentially a modern-day geisha. <laughs> I have a career opportunity coming up. It's a little bittersweet to leave the box because this is where I started my vlog. And I'd wanted to vlog for a long time. This is where the magic all started. I grew from zero subscribers to 24 subscribers. And it all just seems like a few months ago. <gasps> yeah. and what he knows you ain't had time to learn. These boots are made for walking. And that's Eva wanted orange shoes, and she just has a magic way of making what she wants happen. Yeah, look, they go with the pants. Yeah. Bitch! You're doing a good job on those boots. Bitch! Thank you! There's a lot of weird guys out there, and I think tonight I have just encountered one. All right, I'm set to leave tonight. I'm set to leave New York. I'm driving to an undisclosed location, and I've talked to the driver twice now, and tonight was the third time. He told too many stories. He told all these, like, detailed, personal, just ramblings, and I'm like, I don't know you, and I'm calling about a ride, like, the times and whatever. So, and he says he has a wife and this and that. He says, like, he's taking a load of someone's stuff, and th we have another guy that, you know, he picked up, and he's going to be driving too and helping out, and blah, 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 and he's giving me, like, a discount. And then today, suddenly, the other guy who's riding isn't coming. He's not taking the lady's stuff. He changed the times up. He changes the time that we're leaving to be more in late at night. So basically, like, everything changed. And I'm like, well, where... I'm like, wait, so, wait, but you're going anyway? Or like, so you're not taking anyone's stuff? And he's like, no, I'm taking you. Like, you you want to go? Like, come on. I'm like, what the hell is this? Yeah, so he calls back and it's all different. And I'm like, that's weird. And he also has no boundaries with talking. He just is invading my time with his, like, one-sided conversations at me. A complete freaking stranger who he's going to be stuck in a car with for two days. He's like, he's like, oh, you're cool. You're cool. And then, and then he's like, I got one request, though. Why don't you wear... Why don't you wear a prom dress and some heels? <laughs> and I'm like, I didn't say anything. I was just like, I was like, that's kind of weird. Like I actually said something. He was like, oh, I hope you don't want to like not go on the ride anymore. So I started looking up other options and I, I didn't find anyone else on Craigslist. But you know what? I shouldn't be hitchhiking through the internet anyway. Like, am I insane? Am I a child? So I found a reputable guy, John. I love John. He was like, I told him what was going on, and he was like, you know, he was like, that doesn't sound like it started off too good, and he's like, the general rule with Craigslist is if it starts off bad, it's not going to get any better. And he's like, really? That's how it is in life for anything. If it starts off bad, it's probably not going to get any better. I was like, John, I like you. I like you. So, yeah, I have an $80 voucher with Southwest. Um, so I can try, I can find a, a you know, last minute ticket through them. And get John to move my stuff professionally. Yes, it'll cost me more money, but oh my god, I would rather be alive and with no money than dead with money in a bank account I can no longer use. Even if I wasn't killed, even if I just got raped or something, like, I can't live with that. Ew. Ew. But sometimes your life comes to a point where you have to produce a masterpiece or a body or something. You have to reclaim your spirit and you have to do this. Or you do it for... And there's a number of reasons why an artist needs to make a body of work. 
sometimes I say it's to soothe a variety of anxieties. Like music will soothe a certain type of anxiety. Painting will soothe a certain type of anxiety. Writing will help you work through a certain series of anxieties, you know? So theater, you know, all of it. So, you know, dancing, I mean, that's the best. I think dancers have it right. But there's more to it than that, you know? And the anxieties are tied to something greater. So it's all, it's all whatever it is. I've learned to trust my gut over the years. If it feels weird, it's weird. I'm not going to second guess myself. I said I can't do the drive. I'm going to fly and ship the stuff with this guy, John. And if he tries to call me back, I'm just not going to pick up. Okay. Great.